about Amerigo Vespucci. So Amerigo Vespucci is who we named the Americas after. So the United States of America, North America, South America, it all come from this one dude. This one dude named Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian. It says that he was born and raised in Florence on the Italian peninsula. And so that means he was in Italy, I guess, before Italy was Italy or was under occupation. 1500, he was around uh, Christopher Columbus. And the reason why we're called the Americas is because Americo Vespucci was some big, you know, fucking guy. Eventually, he wasn't that big, but then he becomes big, and he's sailing, and he's the one that says, hey, wait a second, that's uh, two other continents. That's not, we're not in Malaysia anymore, you know, Toto. We're not in Kansas. Well, actually, we, we, found, we found Kansas, Toto, so we ain't in Malaysia. No, so it's not in Asia, right? So it's not in um the Christopher Columbus still thought that he had hit the West Indies, the western part of Asia, which, you know, the Indians. That's why he called them the Indians. But that old Christopher Columbus, what a stupid... He probably thought the world was flat, too, stupid-ass motherfucker. I mean, Jesus Christ, the world is flat. Is that what the fuck some people want to say? The world's flat? So, it just everybody and everything in the entire world is just lying, right? All the satellites, all the cell phone service, all the, you know, satellite TV, and all, everybody is just lying, the curvature. And this was figured out, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 15,000 years ago by the fucking Romans, uh, Aristophanes and uh, Aristophanes, <laughs> um, some, I don't know, Pythagoras, some motherfucker, I think it was Aristotle. But uh, somebody knew that you, you could use the points to the stars and the constellation. When a ship comes over the horizon, you could see the hull first. So how could you see the top of the ship before you see the actual ship? And the constellations is actually how Amerigo Vespucci figured it out. So he's uh, going along by uh, Rio de Janeiro. So he's just kind of sailing along South America riding on a Portuguese ship. And he determined, like, you know, this is all different animals, different plants. The land, is, the dirt is different. The stars are different. We're seeing different stars over here that we've never even seen in our lifetimes. What the, you're sitting there trying to tell me this is Asia. So that's how he was able to figure that out. And then he wrote, like, just a couple pages. He only, he had four uh, voyages, and two might be, you know, uh, folklore. It might be myth. Which is crazy. So Amerigo Vespucci is very similar to the soldier who overthrew Emperor Maurice and then wiped out his whole family. So at no point in time do we know who the hell this fucker is. And then he just, you know, appears in the historical record out of nowhere. Who killed Emperor Maurice? The emperor who succeeded Emperor Maurice for like five years. Chopin? I want to say it's Chopin, but I'm not even for sure. But just out of nowhere, right? Just a soldier just being quiet, quiet, bidding his time, just, you know, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Amerigo Vespucci, he had started working. Um, he worked with the Lorenzo Medici. The Medicis were evil, and the Portuguese were the slave ships. So is he on a slave ship going all around here? But there's nothing about Amerigo Vespucci being like a piece of shit or beating his kid or there's seems to be you know basically he's just a guy we named America after because he was the first one to say uh, that these were two completely this is the new world this isn't an old world it's a brand new world we've never seen this world before so that's why Amerigo Vespucci got all the credit the United States of America Amerigo is his first name Amerigo but then the, the Latin version is Americus, and then to feminize it is America. So Europa is feminine, Asia is feminine, and America is feminine. So that was the birth of America. Why do we call ourselves Americans? Because of this Amerigo Vespucci, because of an Italian person, this Italian guy, or this guy, this Florence guy before on the Italian peninsula who worked with the Medicis. So he worked with Columbus's voyages. He had actually gathered a bunch of cattle for one of Columbus's voyages. So, yeah, the first, he was on a 1502 ship. He went to Brazil in the West Indies or so. I don't know. 
but uh, he was the guy that figured it out. And basically, it was because of the constellations. It was the constellations. It was the goddamn stars and the land masses, the shapes, the animals, the foliage, the plants, the people, basically everything. It was all completely exotic. There was nothing on Asia's coast that even closely resembled, you know, the Bahamas. And he went all the way down to Argentina, too. So he just kind of saddled, you know, sailed along South America. Chris Columbus, he only went to the, he never set foot in the United States of America. He just set, we you know, he's in San Salvador. He killed a half a million Taino pe uh, people, so he's a goddamn genocidal fucking, he's a monster. Chris Columbus is an absolute disgusting fucking monster. So Vespucci was, you know, sitting there helping Christopher Columbus get a bunch of cattle. And this is, you know, 1492 is when he sailed the ocean blue. So this is 1500. It's about just eight years after Columbus had, you know, discovered America and told the Europeans, hey, come over here and plunder and genocide and make sure you bring your slaves. And they did. That's exactly what they did. So Vespucci was like, um, you know, sign me up. So I don't know. I don't know any, that's the thing, I don't know anything about Vespucci, I don't know if he had kids, I don't know if he had a wife, I don't know how old he was, I think he's going to die like, you know, just 10 years after all this, and then he only wrote like a couple letters, so what I gather from all that is just that he was a man of stature, he was a man of stature who had fame, and he had, you know, basically postulated the first major, you know, um, astronomer or scientist or voyager or whatever, an explorer, who had said, no, nah, you guys are wrong, here's the proof, because these are completely new continents. You know, they didn't have space shuttle pictures, so the picture of Earth is bullshit. If Earth is flat, so that means the solar system's bullshit, the fucking moon is bullshit. If you ever saw the shadow of a moon, if it was a plate, just put a plate in front of a light. If it was a, a plate, you would have a shadow that's just, a, a, you know, like a little a plate. It would be the shape of a plate if you think the Earth is a plate. And if it's a plate, where the fuck is the edge? Jesus Christ. I'm all about, you know, questioning things. You do question authority. So I think, like, at first you might say, huh, it, maybe there is, but that's like, I mean, we've gone 10,000 years. You know, we've gone before what the fucking Romans and Greeks knew when they could just figure out, you know, triangles and uh, looking at the constellations and memorizing all the constellations and then going to another region and saying, hey, these constellations are incorrect. So they're able to find that out. He was able to predict Earth's circumference within 50 miles. So Vespucci, not only was he able to figure out that the Americas was a new world, he was able to figure out what the circumference of the entire Earth is. Now, if it's a saucer, I guess the circumference would just be around the, the edges, because if it was around, I mean, but the Earth's circumference is 25,000 miles. From north to the south pole, it's 24, 860 miles, and around the equator, it's 24,901 miles. So actually, 25,000 miles is 99 miles off, so my uh, you know, rounding up, my estimate is more off than what Vespucci what uh, Amerigo Vespucci predicted. He only predicted within 50 miles. And I'm 99 miles off. The shape of the Earth is an oblate spheroid. Earth's density is 5.51 grams divided by centimeters cubed. Duh. Of course, it's 5.51 grams per centimeters cubed. Gravity makes things fall at 9.80 uh, seven, nine point eight zero seven meters per second squared. So if you had three meters up, it would take three seconds. No, nine meters. If you had it twenty-seven meters, I don't know. What am I saying? Nine point eight zero seven meters per second squared. Okay, I gotta I'll have to write that out. But you gotta know that, right? The equation for gravity. Gravity's pretty certain, you know, you throw things up, comes right down, and it's going down at an accelerated rate. So it's coming down faster and faster, and everything falls at the exact same rate, the exact same rate. Only wind resistance is what would change it. So the gravity, again, is 9.807 meters per second squared, because you should know that. Now, I was wanting to put this in the historical context. I don't really know shit about the Americas. I know a lot of American history, and I know a lot about, you know, the Native Americans, too. 
But if you just look at the totality of the entire thing, okay, so the Mayan civilization, right? The Mayan civilization, the Incas was in South America, Mayans in Central America, and then the Aztecs was in Mexico. So you had the, you know, these are the big civilizations, big-ass empires. Uh, Cahokia, there was Cahokia, was in Illinois, too. So that was like a big-ass mound. It wasn't as huge and as extravagant as the Aztecs and the Mayans and the Incas. But the Mayan civilization, I want to talk about the Mayan civilization because of those two Guatemalan kids that had been, uh, that got killed recently, the Felix and Jacqueline, Felix on midnight, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, so the time that people were getting out of church and going home to go see Santa Claus, that's when uh, Felix had died, succumbed to the common cold, the flu. And so it was either right at the end of Mass when people were taking communion or it was right after Mass as they were driving home to go see what, you know, uh, Santa Claus had brought for them. So they were, even, you know, eating Jesus Christ um, or the, and they, they believed that transubstantiation. Catholics actually believe that the blood and body of Christ is literally the blood and body of Christ. So you're literally cannibals eating the blood of Jesus and the blood of you know, um, the body of Jesus Christ, and now Felix is dead. So if you, you know, you get you motherfucking cannibals, it's just weird shit. Anyways, Felix died right between that, right at midnight. They said it was after, then they said it was before, so it's definitely Christmas. They're trying to make it not Christmas Day, but it was Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. It's right there. Some people actually celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve, and they don't do shit for Christmas Day. So Christmas Eve is just as Christmas as fucking Christmas Day is, and it's right at midnight, too, so, what, it was 12 minutes before midnight, or it was 12 minutes after midnight, why don't y'all get your story straight before, you know, y'all want to try to do damage control, so the Guatemalan word for the, um, the word Guatemala is actually a Mayan word, several of these countries are Mayan, Belize is a Mayan word, so Guatemala is a Mayan word, which means the land of trees, there's lots of trees. Jacqueline liked to climb trees. So these are the Mayan people. The Mayan people have been here for 10,000 years. The Mayan people have a birthright citizenship for the last 10,000 years. So Guatemalan word, land of trees. Belize is a Mayan word for muddy watered. They had actually just declared independence from Britain in 1981. That's Belize. Belize just declared their independence not, you know, uh, 40 years ago. So Guatemala and both Belize are Mayan words. Guatemala, the land of trees. Honduras is Spanish for depths. Conejos is Spanish for rabbit. Castillo is Spanish for rib. El Salvador is Spanish for the savior. The actual title is Provincia de, de Nuestro Señor Jesus Cristo El Salvador del Mundo. El Salvador del Mundo, the savior of the world. El Salvador, the Savior. So El Salvador is a Spanish word that means the Savior. So it's kind of, I hate when the conquistadors leave their fucking, you know, stench all over the goddamn place. Christopher Columbus was Spanish, and Christopher Columbus, I think, is the one that names Honduras, because he said, I'm glad we got out of those depths, and the word for depths is Honduras, and then El Salvador is the Savior. So you had some conquistador go in there and say, this is the land of Jesus, the Savior, and now we call it El Salvador, because, you know, the conquistadors, doors are good ass Christians that we all should mimic and copy and let's just keep the names so I really like that Guatemala is a Mayan word Belize is a Mayan word uh, I'm not very happy that Honduras and El Salvador is Spanish most of American states are Native American words Mississippi Illinois Kentucky Indiana literally means the land of Indians Oklahoma means the red people Colorado is just the Spanish actually for red um, Colorado, that sucks. So that's a Spanish word, too. So Spanish, they, the, uh, out of all the conquerors, the Spanish were the most vicious conquistadors out here. They were just sick conquistadors. So you had Cortez. Cortez burns down his own uh, ships, and he forces his 500 men. He's like, look, you guys ain't going back home. I done burned down your ships. What you going to do now? You either got to stay and fight, or you can just, you know, sit here on the beach and on the shores and just wait for your mother to come pick you up. Cortez was fucking horrible. De Soto, Hernando De Soto, Cortez. These motherfuckers ravaged through 
uh, the Americas, and then 100 years later, 80% of the native population was gone. Is that genocide? Is that disease? That's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. How are they dying of disease? Just people getting coughed on? No, the conquistadors are raping. They are raping everybody. So if they're not, you know, killing everybody, then those folks could, will get whatever the Spanish had. And another crazy thing is that the um, architecture, no, the agriculture of the Native Americans was, was more sophisticated than the old world. There was no tomatoes or potatoes or tobaccos or vanilla or chocolate or corn. They never heard of any of these things. And corn, that's a major staple, right? Potato and tomato. Potato is a big staple food and tomato. So they didn't know about a lot of these things. There's a completely new things at pineapples. So they had uh, different, they were growing um, corns, beans, squash. They did the three sisters where they had the corn stalk and then the beans were uh, climbing up the corn stalk and then they had squashes around it on the bottom. So that's what a lot of them did. So they were, you know, they had farms. They, they were civilized. They had farms. They had big cities. They had complicated, complex societies that were going on. But essentially, with conquistadors, you know, they were just going to uh, take everything from everybody because who gives a fuck, right? So uh, that's, and they did it in the name of Christianity, as ironic as that, you know, as that sounds. So Amerigo Vespucci is going to get into town about, you know, 1,500. It's right now 2019, so that's, what, 20, about 2020, 2,000 years uh, past Jesus' birth, 1,500 after Jesus' so-called birth, right? So the 1,500 is when Amerigo Vespucci is going to get here, and then 500 years later, 520 years later, here we are today. So 500 years, there's a 10,000-year timeline. We are skipping 950 years. That's called prehistory, which is so, I think that's so fucking bullshit and racist, to be honest with you, because when it comes to the rich and the poor, the rich people have been fucking over the poor people for years. So I think that there's something to be learned from a continuity of actual American history. American history doesn't begin with Columbus. It don't begin with George Washington. American history begins with, you know, Corn Blossom and the Shawnee and the Cherokee and the Utes and the Comanche. The uh, American history began when the first Americans arrived. They didn't call themselves that. You know, the Europeans took over. And uh, I think the problem with all of these big-ass, you know, slavery and genocide and the reservations and a lot of shit that we see today was because the original Europeans didn't want to integrate. They didn't want to become a society with anybody and everybody. They just wanted to stay, you know, in their own insular little tribes. So tribalism was going on. So Native America... The Native Americans, the history of the Americas, so, right, there's the North American continent, the South American continent, and then there's the United States of America. And the United States of America has been a uh, very successful experiment, right? The uh, imagination, the leader of the free world, the new world. So a lot of good things are coming out of the United States, but a lot of bad things, too, right? So... What I wanted to mention is just that we can learn something from the Aztecs. We can learn something from the Mayans. We can learn something from the Incas. They were raising, you know, crops, and they were eating the crops, and they had calendars, and they had math, and they had... There's a lot of things. So I want to... The Mayan... Okay, so let's just talk about the timeline. They've been here since 8,000 B.C., so 10,000 years ago. Then the Archaic period, so 2,000 B.C., 4,000 years ago, they started farms and villages. So they've been running around just being nomads, right? Just a bunch of chimpanzee nomads just following the, uh, the buffalo herd around and the mastodon herds. So 10,000 years ago, if there was mastodons there. So the Mayan land was not just Guatemala and Belize. It was western portions of Honduras and El Salvador. So the Mayans had a big swath of, you know, a big area there. And the uh, massacres that we're going to see in Jacqueline and Felix's villages were in the Quichi Mayan villages. So it was in the Mayan villages. The native Mayans who've been there for 10,000 years, that's where Ronald Reagan and the General Rios Montt in 82 and 83, they're going to massacre the, uh, you know, the uh, brothers and sisters and the aunts and uncles, the ancestor, the ancestors of Jacqueline and Felix. So why are all these Guatemalans running into the United States? Because of the 1954 coup d'etat. 
We overthrew a revolution, a 10-year revolution, and we ushered in a 36-year civil war, which just ended in 1996, not uh, 22, 23 years ago. So they cultivated corn, beans, and squash, and chili peppers. Peppers. So the world wouldn't know about peppers and jalapeno spicy peppers, right? Uh, so there's peppers and corn and pineapples. The agriculture was actually more sophisticated here. So I think we could actually learn more from the Americas than what we could learn uh, in the European history, you know, pre-1492. Before Columbus came over here, those motherfuckers didn't even know what the fuck was going on. So then they came over here and they found out, oh, that's how they're doing shit. And then they caught up. So then there was a uh, 1500s. So that's what about the Renaissance and the Enlightenment period, right? And the Enlightenment period is not over. There's some justification for the Romantic era, but that's the Romantic era is not the. the you never get past the Enlightenment era. You stay in the Enlightenment era. Maybe you get super enlightened, the Great Enlightenment, the you know the Forever Enlightenment. But to say okay. The Enlightenment's done. When was the Enlightenment over? When we landed on the moon? Well, now nah, we're not going to be enlightened anymore. I think the Enlightenment, when did the Enlightenment end? So, what, the revolution, when the, all the revolutions happened, then it became the age of revolution, but it was revolution because of all the ideas of the Enlightenment, and now, I mean, you still need the Enlightenment ideals for after the revolution, too, so you could have, revo anyways... The Enlightenment is a scientific revolution. It's a, a revolution of thinking about things, the way we think about the world. So, 8,000 B.C., you had the Mayans who were, you know, doing their thing, c complex societies, cultivating corn, bean squash, chili peppers. The first cities of the Mayan cities were 750 B.C., so they had farms and villages 2,000 B.C., 4,000 years ago. First cities is 750 B.C., so that's, you know, what, 20, about 3,000 years ago. Then 500 B.C., the cities possessed monumental architecture. So this is all before, you know, Jesus Christ was born, before the Bronze Age, right? So before the, you know, all those people out in the desert on their donkeys um, doing whatever they, swaddling, you know, baby Jesus, the monumental architecture, you got the farming, you got villages, you got complex societies. Then eventually 250 A.D. is you're going to have city-states, trade routes. There's two big cities of the Mayans called Tikal and Kalukmal. Kal so Tikal and Kalukmal. Those are two big cities of the Mayans. Then 1500, Spanish colonized Meso Mesoamerican region, massive campaigns. Eventually, you know, genocided the Mayans. The fall of Najpitan is 1697 A.D. So before 1700, 1697 A.D., about 200 years after the Spanish started colonizing everybody, then the fall of Najpitan happened. And the fall of Najpitan was the end of the Mayans. That's the, like, fall of Saigon. So the collapse of the Mayans uh, happened, you know, the pinnacle event, the last major, uh, I guess, uh, stake through the heart of the vampire. The uh, silver bullet was the fall of Najpeton. So the fall of Najpeton. I've never heard of the fall of Najpeton, 1697. I mean, that's just, what, not even 100 years before the American Revolution. That's right there with, what, Queen Anne's War and uh, King whatever, King William's War. So... The, and this was the Spanish fucking doing all this shit, too. So it would, should be easy for American history, because we had, we overthrew our imperialists, right? We had British imperialists, and we threw our British imperialists off, and then South America and Central America all threw off their imperialists, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, the, you know, there's very few colonies, there's some scattered here and there, but for the most part, you know, Argentina, Chile, uh, Belize. Belize got their independence in 1981. So the Mayans were, you know, here for 10,000 years. The Mayans wasn't just Guatemala. It was Belize and Guatemala, parts of western portions of Honduras and El Salvador. So the Mayans, right, Guatemala and Belize, that's clearly just 100% Mayan. It's Mayan word, Mayan languages. Mayan people still live there today. 
we should actually embrace the Mayan people and just hug. If anybody sees an Aztec or an Incan or a Mayan, remember everybody was freaking out in 2012 because of the Mayan calendar said the world was going to end? So, you know, 10,000 years ago, they're like, watch out, the world's going to end. Well, for them, the fall of Najpeton is when their, you know, civilization collapsed, their society collapsed, but it was because of the Spanish conquistadors. It was because of the European conquerors. The fall of Nodge Peton. So, 12, tw you know, everybody's freaking out. 2012, like the Mayans knew something with their calendar fucking like 5,000 years ago, and their civilization already collapsed, so their end of the world already happened. But we're going to sit there and go with, a, you know, a fallen society's prediction with a, you know, predicted 2022 is going to be the end of the world. That's just so random and arbitrary. It doesn't really make any sense. Maybe they knew something about some Haley's Comet or something that we didn't know about it. I think that's a far stretch uh, of the imagination. So the Mayan lore, right, the Mayan myth, the Mayan folklore is still scaring the shit out of Europeans. <laughs> Maybe they just realized that historical justice would be a bitch. And so, you know, oh, my God, the Mayans, that's crazy. It makes me think of Y2K, too. So that's a little bit about the Mayan culture. For 10,000 years, the Mayans got to do their thing from 8,000 B.C. to zero up until 1500, up until Amerigo. Basically, when Amerigo Vespucci started to come around, then the Mayan civilization just collapsed and crumbled. But before Amerigo Vespucci, and that's also a big controversy about Native American names. What do you call Native Americans? Uh, do you call them Indians or Native Americans or pre-Native Americans? The First Nations, I think, is actually most accurate. The First Nations. Because how can you call them Native Americans when Amerigo Vespucci wasn't born, you know, uh, until or didn't do his thing until the 1500s? So they weren't Americans. They were here for 10,000 years. They were Mayans. Well, that's in English, whatever my, you know, whatever they called themselves. They weren't Americans for, you know, 8,000 years. And so Amerigo Vespucci comes around. All of a sudden, everybody's got to take Amerigo's name. So it's not just Amerigo's world, right? It's been um, Mayan's world. It's not just Wayne's world. Amerigo round. Amerigo round, Vespucci. Ah, Vespucci, where are spaghetti? Amerigo Vespucci. So anyways, that's Amerigo Vespucci. That's on Amerigo Vespucci and tied in with the Mayan civilization. Peace.